And we're going to finish up with number eight. And uh, a few students uh, asked some good questions about uh, number eight in class. Some of the students had some real troubles, but I want to reassure you this is actually fairly simple uh, as long as you follow the line of reasoning. Uh, recall that the coefficients in a balanced chemical equation give relative amounts of moles as well as numbers of molecules. A. Calculate the number of moles of CO2 that form if 10 moles of C3H4 react according to the following equation. So we are actually given 10 moles C3H4. Now, what this chemical equation is telling us is that for every one of these C3H4s, three CO2s are created. So for every one mole of C3H4, three moles of carbon dioxide are created. Those cancel, I come up with 30 moles CO2. That's it, 30 moles. For B, I'm gonna do something very, very similar. I'm just gonna look, instead of CO2, I'm gonna look at O2. I'm starting with 10 moles of C3H4. And look at this balanced chemical equation. Uh, the ratio I'm going to use is no longer 1 to 3 because I'm changing the species that I'm looking at. It's actually going to be 1 to 4. So 1 mole of C3H4 is relative to 4 moles of O2. Moles of C3H4 cancel out, and I have 40 moles of O2. 40 moles. And it's as simple as that. I'm using the mole ratios, the coefficients, in the correctly written balanced chemical equation. And then I'm using my conversion factors.